Hi! In my previous video on spherical mirror grinding, I promised to do a follow-up video on how to make a small concave mirror surface from the blank. So in this video I'll show you the process. The spherical surface I grinded has a radius of around 400 mm. In addition I also generated a convex counter tool specifically for the grinding process. Now as you can see the two fit quite nicely together but they have a very rough surface. So we're going to work on the surface quality. As I discussed in the video on radius milling, the diamond tools used for milling glass leave deep cracks in the material. And this is called subsurface damage. And it can cause all kinds of problems in optics. So we should first remove this damage. We do this by additional grinding with for example silicon carbide. Now the grinding process also works by creating cracks in the glass surface, but these cracks are much less deep because of the much lower pressure on the grinding particles compared for example to the pressure used in diamond cutting. We start off by using a relatively large silicon carbide grain, for example 220 or 400 mesh for a longer period of time, let's say 20 to 25 minutes for this size of blank. It's vital to remove the subsurface damage caused by the diamonds with the coarsest grain because it will be almost impossible to remove later on using smaller grains. The total grinding process consists of gradually using smaller and smaller grains of silicon carbide. So here I show you how to do the grinding. I generally start out by making indication marks on both the blank and the tool. And that's just to visualize uh, the direction of placement of these items. Next I put a bit of silicon carbide suspension in water on the tool. I always use a suspension when possible. And this is because a suspension is much easier and cleaner to work with. Now there are several ways you can grind the surface to a good spherical shape. Basically all methods involve the constant rotation of the blank and the tool in order to prevent grinding over one specific direction too long. So if you grind over the same direction all the time, the surfaces will gradually become cylindrical instead of spherical. So it's vital to rotate the blank and the tool very regularly and at different rates or even directions in order to end up with a nice spherical shape. One can use either short linear strokes or circular strokes or a combination of the two. The most important thing is to keep the strokes short, otherwise you will have a non-uniform removal of material between center and edge of the blank and this results in an aspherical surface. The grinding suspension should be refreshed regularly because the silicon carbide grains are gradually crushed into smaller pieces and lose their grinding power pretty quickly. Also, the suspension becomes saturated with glass particles that come off the surface. Now, as the general time for each grain, for a small blank like this, the time can be actually fairly limited. Let's say between 5 and 10 minutes for each grain, apart from the first one. However, this time is mainly dependent on the size of the blank and the pressure that is exerted during grinding. So a few years ago I used to make large mirrors, uh, up to 500 mm in diameter, and these large mirrors require a significantly longer time to grind, generally a minimum of one hour per grain size. And this is partly due to thermal effects, because even one degree difference between front and back of the mirror can easily deform the shape of the blank by many microns. And this leads to an uneven material removal and roughness variations. Now just for comparison I placed our current blank next to a 500 mm diameter mirror, which by the way is coated with protected aluminum. So making this 500 mm mirror took quite a lot more time than the process that I demonstrate in this video. Ok, back to our blank. To check if the shape of the surface is spherical, we can use a pencil or a permanent marker on the side where we grind. If the lines grind away uniformly over the whole surface, we know that there is good contact in all areas, which indicates a correct spherical shape. To know whether we can continue to the next grain, it's necessary to study the glass surface under a microscope. Pits in the surface that are significantly larger than the general roughness indicate that subsurface damage of diamond cutting or from a previous grain still exists. These are the signs that we should continue longer with the current grain. Now if you observe roughness variations between for example the center and the edges of the blank, 
The grinding strokes are probably too long and this leads to aspherical surfaces and aspherical surfaces cannot make good contact with each other. Between working with different grains, the surfaces and the working space should be carefully cleaned in order to avoid contamination with larger grains later in the process. So a larger grain can cause a nasty scratch which can cost a lot of time to remove again. For this reason I never wear shirts with long sleeves when I grind since these are notorious for collecting particles and releasing them somewhere later in the process when you are fine grinding. Now as we get to smaller particles the surface gets more and more shiny when examined under a small viewing angle and when we get to the last grain, let's say uh, 1200 mesh, we should be able to observe surface reflections under an angle of almost 20 degrees. The next step is to improve the surface smoothness uh, with pitch polishing. For glass polishing we use cerium oxide polishing powder. Polishing requires a very intimate contact of the tool and the glass surface. And this can be achieved by using so called optical pitch. And although it appears a solid substance, it's actually a very high viscosity Newtonian liquid. So the principle is that the pitch will slightly deform during polishing and adapt its shape to the surface of the glass. Now pitch is actually a very high viscosity organic resin, generally made from trees. The viscosity of the pitch however is strongly dependent on temperature and it can change a factor of 10 over a range of only 10 degrees easily. This means that if we want to do well-defined polishing, we should use the pitch at a very well-defined temperature. If the pitch is too warm, deformation of the pitch occurs too easily and this can strongly enhance polishing rates at the edge of the object, resulting in a so-called dropped-off edge, which is highly undesirable and can take a long time to remove. To make a pitch tool, the pitch is heated up to about 100 degrees Celsius and then poured on a convex glass chuck. As the pitch cools down, the viscosity goes up again. And when still warm, the pitch is pressed in the shape of the blank. In this case, we make the pitch tool slightly larger than the blank since this makes it easier to achieve a spherical shape when using the mirror on top configuration. When cooled down, channels are cut into the pitch and these are intended to make the pitch more easily adapt to the surface shape of the glass because the channels can locally accept an excess of pitch. In addition to cutting channels with a knife, the pitch surface can be brushed with a steel brush to make micro channels, which can improve the surface contact of the tool with the glass even further. When satisfied with the surface shape and with the blank and the polishing tool at a very well defined temperature, we can start the actual polishing process. So a few drops of cerium oxide suspension are applied to the tool and the cerium oxide particles are generally a few microns in size but they're much softer than grinding particles and less sharp and they can embed into the pitch. So this is the reason that we can bring down the surface roughness of the glass from let's say a few microns down to a few nanometers. The cerium oxide also chemically interacts with the surface and this process speeds up the removal of glass even further. During polishing we basically use similar strokes as those uh, used in grinding, so short, linear or circular strokes. Polishing however can be quite time consuming since it's a very slow process. It can be sped up using substantial pressure, however using a high pressure will also cause a high friction and will lead to the generation of heat. And this causes elevated pitch temperatures which are undesired. So it's important to keep the pitch temperature constant and as close to its working temperature as possible. Another source of heat is warm hands and this local heating can be an additional problem when keeping the mirror shape constant. During the whole polishing process the pitch should retain its open structure and should be opened again using a knife or a steel brush when the channels in the pitch fill up. The channels also function as a drain for glass particles that are removed from the surface. So this is the result after about 15 minutes of polishing. It already looks pretty good by visual inspection, but under the microscope we can still observe some small pits in the surface. So we need to continue until even the last of these grinding pits has disappeared. This is the case after approximately 35 minutes. We end up with a very nice shiny surface. We can quickly inspect the surface shape 
uh, using, for example, the Foucault test, also known as the knife edge test. I'm not going into detail on Foucault testing here, but I will post some references to the Foucault method in the description. So with the Foucault test, it's possible to visualize variations in the spherical radius of a concave surface by inspecting the reflections of the surface in the center of radius. The reflectivity of the current surface is approximately 4%, which is sufficient for this purpose. It's possible to make a very simple Foucault tester from just a smartphone and a razor blade by placing the razor blade halfway over both the LED and the lens. And when the lens and the LED are positioned near the center of the concave spherical surface, a Foucault image shows up on the smartphone screen, allowing for a quick evaluation of the surface. Keeping the smartphone steady in the center of radius is a challenge, so here I place the phone on an adjustable stand. The Foucault image shows the presence of a drop-down edge, which is probably from temperature variations during the polishing process. However, it's not dramatic and can be fixed uh, by additional and milder polishing, so using less pressure. Because this particular mirror is just intended for light collimation of an LED, I will leave it at this. Uh, next step would be to put on a reflective coating on the surface, which I will not show in this video, maybe in the next one. So that's it for this video. I'll post some links and book titles in the description for more info on grinding and polishing methods. Thanks for watching to the end. Bye.